All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. I got a little quick project I got to do tonight. This one's going to be for myself, and you'll notice I'm sporting one of my old Central Alabama aerial shirts tonight. And the reason being, uh, recently I've had some things have, uh, have been evolving and I've been getting asked to do a lot more drone photography. I had, had kind of quit in recent years, but then I got to thinking I wanted to update my, my intro and do some other things uh, with the channel using the drone and so I went through and I've updated and uh, made sure all of my stuff with the FAA is up to date and uh, we're going to be seeing basically two of my hobbies collide tonight because I've got some work I'm going to do to my drone so stick around. All right, guys, for those of you that don't know, uh, this is my little Mavic. Uh, this is my personal drone that I purchased back in 2017. Uh, it's the, the one that, that I've used for pretty much continually since then. Uh, I've taken a lot of photography for real estate agents and stuff like that over the years and uh, used it with work. Uh, we also have one at the police department that is department owned that I also fly. And uh, so, just been going through my stuff and decided to get this guy out and do a little more work with it lately. Uh, and there were some updates that in my refresher course that I had to take that they've kind of changed some of the rules on me. So I'm having to go back and, and redo some things. Uh, one of the biggest changes that I had either overlooked or <laughs> they just recently changed it, not sure which, but is in the early days when I first purchased this machine and registered it and all that, the registration had to be easily accessible without tools, meaning that as long as you didn't have to have tools to get to the registration number, you could put it underneath the battery. And that's what most of us did because nobody wanted those big stickers on the outside of the drone and that kind of thing. Uh, but in recent times, and I learned this in my update the other day that I had to take, uh, they now require the registration numbers to be on the exterior of the craft, visible without having to take anything off of it basically they want it to where you can just walk around it and look at it and you're supposed to be able to see the numbers so part of the thing that they said you could put it on there you know it has to be on there but a permanent means blah 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 so what i've decided to do is instead of using a sharpie or some type of paint pen or something like that i'm just going to see about engraving it in the top of my machine uh right across here in this little flat area here and uh, I don't know if you can see that, but th this area here is kind of flat. Now, the number's kind of big, so we're going to have to balance that and frame it out real good and make sure I get it where I want it. But that's going to be tonight's job. Now, before any of you go to hollering, I understand this is not necessarily laser-safe plastic. This is an experiment at best. This is, like I said, this, this is my machine. Uh, if I tear it up, I tear it up. Uh, but I feel pretty confident that I can find the appropriate settings to get just enough of an engrave to be able to see it and maybe even go back and, and, and paint fill it without any problem. So that's what I'm going to be attempting to do. And for this job, because the drone is kind of tall, I'm going to be using the uh, Acer with the uh, mechanical bed to make sure that I can get that uh, elevation just right. All right, guys, so for this operation, the one thing that I am going to have to be concerned about is to make sure that the, my, my text is square. And the way I'm going to be doing that is I'm going to be using just a flat jig on my jig panel and I'm going to basically rest it up against these two front legs right here. And as long as I can maintain a straight line between these two, then I should have a straight surface here. So I'm going to take this little flat panel. This is just a, just a real tiny jig panel and put it in there and just use it as a squaring surface. All right, guys, so I've got me a uh, piece of masking on here and I've marked the center of this little flat area right here. Uh, so the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to wind up because I don't want to have a collision with the rotors that stick up a little high. What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to use current position and I'm going to set that little dot right there and I'm going to select the appropriate dot on the current position to indicate that my laser is directly above where I want the text, which will make it drop down into this area and engrave here. So I'm going to get that set up. All right, in order to do this, the one thing, the one disadvantage I, that I'm not crazy about with the Acer is being able to see with the machine oriented this way, being able to see my framing dot. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to fire the dot, get it, aligned, get it lined up, and then focus it once I've got it lined up on that mark. All right, so I've got it down to the depth that it needs to be in order to burn this. 
and I've got the machine squared. Everything's where it needs to be. I've got the laser dot pointing directly on the mark that I made. The one thing that's very critical that I have found with this, with this setup is you've got to make sure you orient yourself properly in the workspace because technically the laser dot is going to be below where I want the text to be, but I want the text to be readable from the front. So I'm actually going to have to flip the text. So that's one of these things that when you orient your machine like this, you kind of have to be careful because my text is actually going to be upside down if I don't flip it. So I'm going to go ahead and get over here to Lightburn and get that text set up and get it oriented the way I want it to. All right, guys, from the alignment that I did, putting the center mark on this flat surface, I do know that I've got roughly 44 millimeters of space between the sides of that, that flat area. Uh, so that's going to be the contained size of my text in order to do a one line text. So I've got that set up. That's only going to put my text coming in at five millimeters in height. Now I'm not crazy about that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to double the size of the text and then make it a two line. Uh, Cause it doesn't say it either has to be, you know, one line or two. So I think I'm going to double the size of the text and then break it into two pieces. So I can make the text a little bigger. So after making those adjustments, that's actually got my font up to about 12 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and I'm just gonna frame it out and see exactly where it's gonna go on the machine. That looks pretty decent. So. Before I do a whole lot to it, I'm going to do just a real faint run, the first cut. I do have the masking tape on there, so it's not going to burn as easily. But I'm going to run a real faint line and just kind of look at that and see how that looks. All right, so using the move option in the uh, software, I'm going to set my move distance to 50, okay? And I'm going to hit the down button, which is going to move my machine 50 millimeters that way. Just enough to where I can see exactly what we've got going on here. And it looks like everything's where I want it, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let this thing uh, burn now. So I'm going to move it back up without moving anything. Same increments, 50 back to where it was. And I'm going to change that from a... Uh, line over to a burn i'm going to turn the speed is going to stay at 100 but i'm going to turn the power down to 80 percent and run it getting the warning about out of bounds i'm going to tell it yes and keep in mind i've got to get through that layer of masking before i'm even going to burn the plastic so the object here is to try to do that Turn the air assist on just in case that uh, masking tries to flash on me. Keep my nozzle clean. All right, guys, this is one of the reasons I don't like masking is the masking did not cut entirely the way I want it to. So I'm going to run one more pass, give it a little bit more gas and see if I can't get through that stuff. All right, guys, from what I can tell out here after that second pass, I got to a decent depth and I don't want to try to go any deeper. Because, like I said, I have taken this machine apart and put it back together and that type of thing. So I know this is a pretty thick material where I'm engraving, but I don't want to go to getting, you know, too deep and try to weaken it. So I'm going to go ahead and move the laser head out of the way and just confirm that my suspicions are correct. I'm moving the machine 200 millimeters that way, and I'm doing a known distance and using the control so that if I do need to go back, I could go back and go over it again. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go with that's going to be as deep as I need to go on that. So I've got myself a, a pretty decent little uh, pretty decent little burn there. And you can actually, by using my, my nail, I can tell that it's actually into the plastic. So that's what I wanted. That's going to be good. Uh, so the other thing that I was thinking I might do is try to put me a logo on the back corner here. Uh, so I'm going to measure that and go back with a, uh, maybe like a little logo decoration here on the back corner. All right, I'm going to leave the settings set to 100 and 100 and send it. 
Well, let me change that. Yeah, let me change that to 80. I think 80 will be sufficient for this little marking. And here we go. Again, that's going to be 80 millimeters per sec, 80 power at 100 millimeters per second. And well, on this one, I just kind of want to go for an etched logo. I'm not going to try to feel this or anything on the back. I just want it etched in there. All right, guys, so I got the uh, little soot off the back of it, and there's the result. It, the logo is in there. It's not really going to contrast all that great because, like I said, it's just a little etch. Uh, but I got it in there. So that one's done as well as the numbering is done as well. Uh, all right, guys, so I got it all uh, taped up, and I'm just going to drape this little shirt here around it just to make sure I don't get any more paint on any of the other uh, electrical components or anything. Uh, I decided I was going to use white. Uh, the gold that I have, I, I just don't like the looks of it, so I'm going to go with white. I think it'll contrast a little better. So I'm just going to take and spray the paint into the uh, engrave here. There's a chance that some of it may seep out of the uh, engrave, but with it being a recessed engrave, that's going to help me with being able to wipe the surface off uh, because the, the engrave is recessed in there and leave the paint once it's dry. So we'll see how this turns out. All right, guys. So there we go. It was a success. And guys, that is what happens when two hobbies collide. Uh, so now I have a laser engraved uh, call sign on my uh, my drone so next time i get out trying to do some more uh, updates to my videos and stuff uh i'll be able to uh have it securely on the outside and i know i could have put a sticker on there per se but <clears throat> it did indicate that it needed to be permanent so they can't argue that it's not permanent but for those of you that don't know uh most anybody can can own a drone you can operate a drone recreationally you know flying around your house taking pictures of your kids whatever but the minute that somebody makes money off of that video, whether it be me, whether it be YouTube themselves, or whether it be another YouTuber or whatever, <clears throat> you get into a situation to where you have to have a commercial license, which is under the part 107 of the FAA's rules. So just to keep anything from uh, being an issue, even though I'm not primarily doing drone photography anymore, like I did, you know, back in 2017, I still do use it for my channel. My intro, it's got a video on there that I took a couple of years ago that, you know, was taken with the drone. So just to make sure that I've got all my homework done and all my paperwork is correct, I decided to uh, go ahead and update everything. Mosquitoes are out already, guys. I decided to update everything, and in doing so, I realized that I had not moved my registration to the outside of the machine. And so figured I'd try it with a laser. Uh, and guys, like I said, this this machine I've had it for a while. It's a twenty seven. It's a twenty seventeen build, and uh, it's had its share of uh, near misses and and even repairs done to it from doing some things that I probably shouldn't have been doing with power lines and trees and that kind of thing. But I hope this was interesting to you. Uh, so guys, if you aren't catching our Sunday night lives, Steve and I, like I said, we come, we hang out, we talk about whatever y'all you guys bring up. Sometimes we just talk about the weather. Sometimes Steve makes fun of me because I'm hot. Sometimes I make fun of him because he's cold. But we try to keep it entertaining. We try to keep it informative. And we want to go together and build a community with you guys so that if you have questions or concerns or just want to see what a piece of equipment is capable of, we can maybe help use our channels to get the information or get those, uh, those reviews that you want. And the mosquitoes are bad. See, that's what happens in Alabama, guys. It hits 80 degrees and the mosquitoes come out. But anyway, if you haven't already, go check that out. Uh, you can also join our group, Laser Community, on uh, Facebook. Uh, we've got a little community group going for some of the guys that watch the channel and participate with uh, our lives. Uh, that's where you can go and share some of your projects, share some of your questions. And not only are Steve and I in there to answer questions, but we got a lot of really knowledgeable guys 
with all types of machines that may be able to answer your questions, even if Steve and I aren't around to uh, answer them. So go check that out on Facebook. I'll drop a link down in the description below and uh, be sure to catch us on Sunday nights. So until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.